Greetings ladies and gentlemen, this is Kazu here with another Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak video. Today we're going to be covering the two most popular playstyles for the Longsword in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, and that's going to be the EI Spirit Slash, Spirit Helmbreaker, and Harvest Moon playstyle. This is more of the traditional Longsword playstyle that has been popularized ever since the initial release of Monster Hunter Rise. And then we have the new playstyle that's come out since Sunbreak, and that's going to be the Silkbind Sakura Slash and Sacred Sheath combo playstyle. So we're going to be looking at the pros and cons of each of these playstyles, not necessarily saying which one is better than the other downright. However, I do think that there are specific situations, specific builds, and specific players who will get a lot more value out of using one playstyle over the other, again, depending on the situation. So we're going to do a deep dive into these playstyles using empirical data. I'm mainly going to be showcasing a Tobi Kadachi uh, semi speed run that we did using both of the playstyles. Again, I'm not the greatest longsword player, so the attempts are going to be suboptimal. However, they're good enough that we can showcase kind of the comparison be between damage and between builds. So for anyone wondering why these two playstyles are going to be the meta playstyles for Longsword that we're going to compare in this video, that's just mainly based off of the Longsword speedrunner community. So if you take a look at the speedruns for Monster Hunter Rise, you're going to primarily see special sheath speedruns for most of the monsters, but there are sacred sheath speedruns popping up here and there, and it has been the meta strat on some monsters, mainly Valstrax in particular. Um, if you do need any resources for Longsword speedrunners, I highly recommend Peppo. He's one of the most popular speedrunners on YouTube for Longsword. He's part of Team Darkseid. He's got a ton of great content. And if you look at his most recent video from five days ago, he actually fought Lucent Nargakuga with just a single quick sheath level 3 talisman. No other armors or armor skills. If that's not impressive, I don't know what is. Check out his channel if you need some good Longsword speedruns. For those of you in the Japanese Monster Hunter community, there's also Fu, who is a fantastic Japanese longsword speedrunner. He's got a lot of speedruns as well as just kind of like interesting build videos for the longsword. So go check him out if you're interested. And then last but not least is Urim, another longsword speedrunner. So this guy is just cranking out tons of different types of speedruns for Monster Hunter Rise, all of the new monsters added in with Sunbreak. Do check him out as well. Um, these are mainly going to be special sheath as with all the others, but occasionally you'll see a sacred sheath run that's going to be mind blowing. So check out these YouTubers if you are interested in longsword speedruns. So very briefly, before we get into the playstyles and the comparison of them, we're going to just touch upon the switch skills that we're not going to be using in this video. The first of which is going to be the step slash. So this is a forward overhead draw attack, and it can be replaced with the double drawn slash. The main reason we're not going to use it is because you can just use Spirit Blade 1 if you want to quickly do a draw attack. And the advantage of the double drawn slash is that we have hyper armor on the opening frames of the attack, as well as getting a hefty amount of spirit gauge from this attack, which we can use to change into a spirit blade combo and level up our spirit meter. So this is just gonna be by default a better switch skill. The other switch skill we're not going to be covering is going to be Tempered Spirit Blade. So this is honestly a viable switch skill to run for the Longsword. However, I haven't actually seen it being used in any speedruns. It does synergize with the Sacred Sheath combo to get red meter as fast as possible. But since we don't really use Harvest Moon on Sacred Sheath combo playstyles, uh, we don't really benefit from any additional damage using this counter. And we already have the Sacred Sheath counter as well as Foresight Slash to use if we're getting attacked. So there is potential for this to be used in speedruns later on, or perhaps more optimal setups once I figure that out. But as of right now, I don't see a use for Tempered Spirit Blade in the meta. So some of you might be surprised to hear this, but Serene Pose is actually viable in the meta, and I have seen it used occasionally on a few speedruns as of recent. Um, you do have to use Serene Pose alongside Harvest Moon, so that is a pretty hefty investment of wire bugs. However, if you look over here, the damage is quite good, and we can use this to actually get some part breaks and some trips against specific types of monsters. First off, we're going to analyze the Special Sheath playstyle. So for those of you who aren't familiar, this is going to be focused around using Harvest Moon and then landing EI Spirit Slash as your primary source of DPS. The EI Spirit Slash is going to be a counter, so it gets four additional hits from Harvest Moon and then it gets three 
procs of its own on the counter damage. This is going to give you pretty consistent DPS against any monster as long as you're countering every single attack. And then when you get a good opening, you can go into a Soaring Kick and follow that up with a Spirit Helmbreaker. And that's going to be also a significant portion of your DPS on the hunt. This is a very counter focused playstyle, so you have to have very good reaction time and the monster needs to be aggressive for you to take advantage of the counters. Now going into the hunt that I'm going to be showcasing today, we're going to be fighting Tobi Kadachi primarily because he has really easy hit zones to deal with as well as his tail being the weakest spot on the monster. He's weak to the water element, so we're running a water element build. We're using the Abyss Bringer Blade, which has 310 raw and 72 water, but with the buffed up stats of our build, it's gonna have 371 raw and 101 water with 15 base affinity. The build we're gonna be using for this run is gonna be shown on screen now, and you can see our equipment as well as our switch skills on the left, and then on the right, you're gonna be able to see our armor skills. So for our armor skills, we're gonna have all the DPS skills we want, attack boost seven, element attack five, resentment three, we have crit I three, along with wax and max might level three, so that we have 95% affinity when our stamina gauge is full. And for our elemental damage, we have the water attack level five, critical element level three, element exploit level one, and chain crit level two. Our set is almost fully optimized. We could use another level of chain crit from augmentation, or perhaps a couple more points of resentment, which is gonna always be active due to the one point in dereliction we have. And we're gonna stay on blue swaps grow for the purposes of getting the raw bonus from Dereliction, which is better than getting the element bonus from the Red Swap Scroll. When it comes to the switch skills, um, it shows that I have Harvest Moon for the Blue Swap Scroll, but I'm actually using Serene Pose in this run. Um, the main reason for that is that we're getting additional DPS from running Serene Pose once we've already used Harvest Moon in our Red Swap Scroll. Okay, so looking at the pros for the Special Sheath playstyle, the first point I'd like to make is that it's the most popular longsword playstyle and it's used by the majority of speedrunners. So typically they know what the most optimal strats are, which gives a lot of credibility to the special sheath playstyle. Secondly, is that the playstyle is highly reactive and it rewards player skill. So there's almost limitless skill expression with this weapon, meaning that there's no cap on how good you can get with the longsword. You can always get better, you can always further optimize your decision making mechanics as well as skills. Thirdly, it works better against aggressive and difficult monsters compared to other weapons. So a lot of weapons don't really like fighting against monsters that move a lot or attack rapidly, whereas the longsword is extremely good at dealing with monsters that are aggressive because it just means that you can get more counters and more damage against them. I also want to mention that this has a lot of potential to have 100% uptime on maximum might. So that is a free 30% affinity if you can keep your stamina bar full, which Longsword is one of the few weapons that can actually do this by using Foresight Slashes and Dividing Slashes while under the effects of Harvest Moon to reposition rather than constantly rolling to move around or dodge. Last but not least, it's very easy to learn the Special Sheath playstyle, and it's also very flashy. However, it is difficult to master, and we're going to touch more on that in the cons. So looking at the cons for Special Sheath, we can see that it's very dependent on Monster AI to land counters and utilize Harvest Moon. What a lot of speedrunners won't show you is how many of their speedruns have probably been botched purely off of the monster AI trolling and hovering outside the circle, spamming ranged attacks, flying around, really wasting time. You're spending two wire bucks to use Harvest Moon, so a lot of the times you're just going to stand around in the middle of your circle. You don't want to waste the ability, and that ends up losing a lot of DPS over the course of a hunt. I'd also like to mention that right now there's a massive skill gap between players using this playstyle due to the longsword nerfs. So this is the patch notes from Sunbreak, but post Sunbreak, Spirit Helmbreak has been nerfed by 30% on the cooldown, and EI Spirit Slash has been nerfed 50% on its damage. 
So if we look at our total damage output for this Toby Kodachi hunt, it is about 180. And that's playing, you know, semi-decent. There's definitely some suboptimal plays and it could have been better. But comparing that to Urim, who is a beast speedrunner, he did Lucent Nargakuga in 2 minutes and 52 seconds. His total damage output was over 300 DPS for this hunt, which is going to be way, 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 way beyond the levels of DPS that an average player can output. So you're going to see a big skill gap due to those nerfs. Another con for the Special Sheath playstyle is that it's centered around the new switch skill Harvest Moon, which is just as punishing as it is rewarding. So a lot of players will more often than not find the features added by Harvest Moon frustrating to deal with, and I'm going to have a rant on that later on in the video. So for those of you who are familiar with Longsword, you already know Spirit Helmbreaker has a very finicky hitbox. So in this clip, Peppo is hunting Lucent Nargakuga, he's been playing flawlessly so far, goes in for Spirit Helmbreaker, and no damage. Even though it looks like it should have hit, for some reason the hitbox on this skill still hasn't been fixed yet, and that's another minor issue you could have with Special Sheath. Lastly, I'd like to mention that Special Sheath is honestly a low DPS playstyle if you're unable to upkeep Harvest Moon for the majority of the hunt, or if you're unable to keep Monster Aggro due to playing online or in multiplayer. If we look at a damage breakdown of our EI Spirit Slash, we can see the base damage is roughly 975 with my current build against the training dummy, and our bonus damage that we get out of Harvest Moon is going to be roughly 928 damage, which is 95% additional damage. So although they nerfed Harvest Moon by about half its damage, you get that half damage back if you're playing around Harvest Moon perfectly, which is not something that every player can do. Okay, so now we're going to go into a rant about Harvest Moon, which if you've noticed from the cons of Special Sheath playstyle, this is primarily the main drawback and downside of the Special Sheath playstyle using this new switch skill, which if you aren't familiar, Harvest Moon replaces Serene Pose as a Silkbind move and is a switch skill with a base cooldown of about 25 seconds. It uses two wire bugs, which is quite a steep investment, and it creates this blue circle that you see around our character. Essentially, you have infinite spirit gauge as well as additional damage procs from any counter that you land while within the effects of Harvest Moon. However, if you try to leave the circle, it'll bounce you back in and you have to keep your weapon drawn to maintain the effects of Harvest Moon. So you cannot heal, you cannot use items. It is very restrictive in the sense that you're forced to play perfectly while within the circle to maintain most of the effectiveness of Harvest Moon. And that's kind of the first issue we run into is that this is the opposite of player friendly. This move is intentionally by design, pretty frustrating to work with depending on the monster's AI and how aggressive they are. If they want to use their ranged abilities or fly around, they can waste a lot of time while you're trying to use Harvest Moon. And since it's a two wire bug ability, um, you really don't want to be sheathing your weapon intentionally and putting it away just to get closer to the monster or just to maintain aggression because then you're going to have to wait at least 25 seconds. So again, our first point or my first issue with Harvest Moon is that it has a long cooldown and a steep investment for its usage while already being extremely restrictive. If they you know, increase the size of the circle you would have a lot more space to work with. You wouldn't have as much issues with spacing and distance management as you might, which again, is not an issue for professional players or speedrunners, but this is going to be a very serious concern for newer players and people who aren't willing or able to put in the time to get perfect at Longsword. So that's a pretty huge drawback. It does have a total duration of 90 seconds. However, due to the two wirebug cost of Harvest Moon, I would actually expect it to have a duration of, you know, more so two minutes or three minutes even, so that you don't have to upkeep it as much during a hunt. Wirebugs are already a very tightly contested resource for longsword players, so you want to be using your Soaring Kick and your Silkbind Soccer Slash. Those are very long cooldown abilities. They have over 30 second long cooldowns. Um, even Serene Pose is another ability that you can use alongside Harvest Moon for additional damage, but then you're going to have to be worried about if you're going to have the wire bugs or not to upkeep Harvest Moon. With only 1 minute and 30 second duration, if you have a 10 minute long hunt, you're going to have to recast it at least 3, 4, maybe even 5 times. 
And that's not even taking into consideration the fact that you'll have to end it early sometimes to either heal or the monster is going to move away from the circle, stuff like that. So that is my second point of concern. So this brings us to our final point on Harvest Moon, which is that the special sheath playstyle is very dependent on Harvest Moon for its damage output. We've already shown that EI Spirit Slash does about pretty much double damage if it's under the effects of Harvest Moon. And moves like Serene Pose as well are completely buffed up and a lot better if you use them with Harvest Moon and Absolute Garbage if you don't use them with Harvest Moon. Unfortunately, due to the Longsword nerfs, they decided to bring in Harvest Moon, which justified them nerfing the heck out of Spirit Slash. And they even nerfed Spirit Helmbreaker too, which just really severely affects this playstyle unless you're highly skilled the average level of player will get more detriment rather than benefit out of the nurse to Sunbreak. Now, also I would want to mention is that if you don't use Harvest Moon, if you play online where it's pretty hard to maintain monster aggro consistently, or if you're just really unlucky and the monster runs away from your circle and you're not able to upkeep Harvest Moon, you're going to be dealing approximately 30 to 40% less total DPS over the course of a hunt because counters make up for the majority of your damage output when using the special sheath playstyle. Helmbreaker is still going to deal the same amount of damage, but since that got a 30% cooldown nerf, it can be used a lot less frequently over the course of a hunt. And that's kind of where we're at with Harvest Moon. I'm sure there's some players who find it rewarding to play around the restrictions added by this move. However, I think most players will find this ability to be anti-fun rather than a fun and enjoyable ability. So now we're going to be covering the Sacred Sheath playstyle, which mainly focuses around using the Soapbind Sakura Slash when you have an opening, or using the Sacred Sheath counter when a monster is attacking, to quickly gain levels of Spirit Gauge so that you can perform what is called the Spirit Release Slash from the Sacred Sheath combo. This is going to give us a huge amount of damage output at once, and is going to be our main source of DPS throughout hunting. So we're also going to be doing a similar sort of little speed run against Toby Kadachi so that we can compare it to the special sheath playstyle. And for this one, we're going to be using the Voltus Slow Plus, which is a water element longsword that has a heavy focus on raw damage. So it has 340 raw, minus 10% affinity, white sharpness, and 29 water damage. But if we look at our attack status for this build, we have a juicy 404 raw attack. We have 49 water damage. We have minus 10% affinity. However, this is going to be offset by crit draw, which I'm going to show with the armor skills. So taking a look at the armor skills for this build setup, you can see again on the left is going to be our equipment and our switch skills. And then on the right is going to be our armor skills. For our armor skills, we have pretty much maxed out raw damage. We have attack boost level 7, resentment level 5. We have our main crit skills. We're going to be using Wex 3 alongside Critical Draw 3. So Critical Draw is probably a super underlook ability for the Sacred Sheath playstyle. And this is kind of one of the benefits of the Sacred Sheath playstyle I'm going to get into later on. But it does work with all three hits of the Spirit Release Slash for those of you wondering. And then we have our one point of dereliction for a nice juicy chunk of extra raw and chain crit as well. We have two points of handicraft in the build. You only need one to get purple sharpness, but two is nice, you know, it's, it's extra. Um, and then as far as our talisman goes, it's again going to be a very serious quick sheath level three, wire bug whisperer level two, two two slot talisman. That's a mouthful, I know. And our switch skills mainly again are going to be the spirit round slash combo, sacred sheath combo, and silk bind sakura slash. Harvest Moon or Screen Pose doesn't really matter. You're not really going to use either one with this build. Looking at the pros for the Sacred Chief playstyle, we can see that this is one of the few weapons and playstyles which can actually use Critical Draw unironically. Um, the Critical Draw will apply to all three hits of your Spirit Release Slash, and since this is our main damage output, we can actually take advantage of the Crit Draw to have a very slot efficient way of getting maxed out affinity. Secondly, due to the long animation of the Spirit Elise Slash, this has a heavier focus on commitment and positioning, similar to weapons like the Greatsword and Hammer. So you're being more predictive about the monster behavior rather than being reactive on the monster attacks. In contrast to the Special Sheath playstyle, you're going to see a substantial increase in DPS over the Special Sheath playstyle when fighting against slower monsters that have big openings because you can just take advantage of those openings with your Sakura Slash as well as your Sacred Sheath combo. 
Another one of the benefits of Sacred Sheath Playstyle is that it has zero reliance on Harvest Moon for DPS. Again, your main DPS tool is going to be the Sacred Sheath combo, and so there's going to be less of a skill gap between average skilled players and good players using this playstyle, so long as you can actually hit your Spirit Release attacks, which are going to be a lot less frustrating in general to deal with compared to Harvest Moon. Lastly, in a similar manner to Greatsword, the Sacred Sheath playstyle can obtain huge damage numbers from sleep wake up attacks and adrenaline and all other sorts of skills that boost raw damage, such as Adrenaline Rush, as you can see here against Grand Golm. And then this is just a sleep attack against a Goat Raytheon. And then we have a, another sleep attack using the Grinder S with the Desperate Roar Plus against a regular Raytheon. And we're hitting for 4,700 damage, not even including Adrenaline. So that's pretty close to the level of Greatsword. Looking at the cons for the Sacred Sheath playstyle, um, the Spirit Release Slash needs to consume all three levels of your Spirit Gauge Bar in order to get its big damage. This means that it takes longer because you have to wait for it to actually consume through those levels of Spirit Gauge. And also, if you whiff on your Spirit Release attack, the final hit, you're going to be missing out on a significant portion of your damage. It's very similar to if you were to miss your True Charge Slash with Greatsword. So there's a huge focus on hitting your combo. It also does not synergize very well with Max Might due to the fact that if you dash while in the sheathing stance, that's going to consume a lot of stamina. So a lot of the times when you perform your Spirit Release Slash, um, you won't have full stamina. So I don't necessarily recommend running Max Might, although you can use it with Max Might. You just have to make sure your stamina bar is recovered. Another con for the Sacred Sheath playstyle is for people who do like to land counters. So because this playstyle is a lot slower and we're going to be in our Sacred Sheath stance, we're going to be usually hopping around, having good positioning. We're just going to be in less opportunities or positions where we would want to counter. And our counters are going to do a lot less damage without the benefit of Harvest Moon. So another thing you might notice is that the Sacred Sheath playstyle can sometimes become reliant on crowd control effects. Um, a lot of the times I'll be running my dogs and then they'll have status weapons so I can get two procs of para, two procs of sleep throughout a hunt. Um, and then also I'll be running traps. However, I have showed in previous um, with a speed run against Raytheon that you can very easily fight monsters without pets and without traps and still get good damage output with this playstyle. So lastly, I just wanted to point out that there are very few speedruns, at least from popular speedrunners, that make use of the Sacred Sheath playstyle. Most of them are special sheath, so it can be pretty difficult to see um, Longsword using Sacred Sheath at its maximum potential. I do recommend, however, that you check out the Valstrax Longsword speedruns. There's a variety of them, most of which do use the Sacred Sheath for the purposes of killing Valstrax as fast as possible, and he is quite a tough fight normally, so it's pretty incredible to check out. Okay, so now that we've gone over the pros and cons of the Sacred Sheath playstyle as well as the Special Sheath playstyle, we're going to kind of look at them side by side and really compare the differences between the two and where they might shine more so than the other playstyle. So I don't want to objectify one playstyle and say that it's directly better than the other. However, there's definitely a lot of situations where these playstyles will excel depending on the type of player and the build you're using. So if we take a look first at the Sacred Sheath playstyle from the Tobi Kadachi run that we just did, we have a total quest DPS of about 250. This is including the pets. They did about 12% of the total DPS for our hunt. And our elemental damage breakdown is about 7.5% of total damage being dealt was done as elemental damage. So you can kind of see with the Sacred Sheath playstyle, you're going to want to use more raw focus weapons rather than element focus weapons. And same for the builds. You want to have more of a focus on increasing your raw attack because that's where you're going to get the most value out of using the Sacred Sheath combo. And our maximum hit done was 4,569 damage, which is pretty great. It was on a sleeping wake up hit though. So that does help us out a lot in terms of doubling our damage for a single hit. But just keep that in mind when it comes to using this build. Now if we look at the damage comparison for the special sheath build where we did the Tobi Kadachi run, um, I do admit this this was suboptimal this run. It could have definitely went a lot smoother and we could probably do sub 2 on both of the runs, but 
just for you know average performance's sake we're going to be comparing this one to the sacred sheath because it actually took me a lot more tries to do complete runs with the special sheath than it did to do complete speed runs with the sacred sheath um, and looking at our total quest dps we're going to see that we did less total damage and it took longer to kill the monster so we have a total of 180 dps with our pets doing about 17 percent of the total dps so of course i could have played this better if i was pepo the output dps numbers would probably be a lot higher we could definitely hit above 200 dps if we performed more optimally However, it still would be pretty competitive with the Sacred Sheath where I don't really think one or the other would be significantly better if played perfectly. On an average level though, I do think Sacred Sheath is going to outperform the Special Sheath unless you're exceptionally good at Special Sheath and landing the counters and using Harvest Moon. Um, you're just going to ge in general have a little bit less DPS. However, if we look at our elemental damage breakdown, we can see 24.5% of our total damage dealt was done as elemental damage. So about 4.2K of our damage dealt, we did 21K damage, um, was element. So you're going to want to use this with elemental damage builds and you can get a lot more value out of bolstering your elemental damage and of course using the new skill element exploit. Our max hit damage that we done was 1,482 on a single hit. This was with Serene Pose. Serene Pose is kind of one of the reasons why I mentioned bringing that alongside your Harvest Moon. You can get a nice bump up in DPS from running Serene Pose if you know when to use it and what to use it against. That is also quite nice and can be used with this playstyle. So one other thing I would like to mention is that the Sacred Sheath playstyle is going to see a significant increase in DPS compared to the Special Sheath playstyle when it comes to playing online and multiplayer. That's mainly because the monster is going to split aggro between different players, meaning that your counters and your Harvest Moon are going to be far less effective because you cannot be reliably hit by the monster consistently. Therefore, you're not going to be able to land a lot of EI Spirit Slashes and you're going to lose a lot of DPS output on the build. When it comes to the Sacred Sheath combo, however, it's kind of the opposite where the, because the monster is not looking at you, you have more opportunities to use your Sakura Slash, you have more opportunities to use your Spirit Slash, and that's going to end up allowing you to get some pretty big DPS. Another advantage that the Sacred Sheath combo or the Sacred Sheath playstyle has is that because we utilize crit draw on a lot of our builds, we can use raw weapons that have negative affinity. And that means we're going to have super high damage output when we land spirit release attacks. You can see here in the footage I'm showing, I'm actually playing with some good friends and all of us are fairly competent. We're getting, you know, around 100 DPS or higher throughout this afflicted hunt. Um, and that means that I'm playing with other players who are competitively using their weapons. But we can see that the Sacred Sheath combo, every single time I land a Spirit Release Slash, my DPS increases substantially. It increases by, you know, around 10 points. And we're already three minutes into the hunt. So that really makes a big difference, especially early on, where every time you land a Spirit Release Slash, it does so much damage that your DPS is going to keep shooting up and increasing. Um... And it will outperform a lot of other hunters, especially if you're able to consistently land those, those spirit release attacks. So that's going to be something to consider for longsword players. If you do play online a lot, I play online not as much as I do solo, but I do like to hang out with my friends and hunt together. So it does definitely make a big difference where we're using the sacred sheath combo. I am going to show you some footage using the special sheath combo in online. This is going to be with randoms, however, so they're doing way less DPS. And I will warn you, I did join the hunt like nine minutes in. So that's why the quest DPS looks super low for all the hunters. I would pay attention more to the MDPS, which is the DPS um, since starting the hunt against the monster or since going into combat with the monster. Um, so again, we're being out DPS by Kezu, who is a hammer player. Um, unfortunately, even though we're able to land our counters pretty consistently and we're doing a lot of Spirit Helm Breakers, um, you can see that our total DPS is just not that high because we don't have Harvest Moon. We, we're not getting that extra damage output that we need to really shine on our character. And that's a big issue for online play that is not obviously not going to present itself for solo play. 
So in conclusion, when we're looking at the Sacred Sheath playstyle versus the Special Sheath playstyle, we can see that the Sacred Sheath is more raw damage focus and the Special Sheath is more elemental damage focus. That does favor the Special Sheath a little bit more since element damage is the current meta for Sunbreak and Title Update 1.0, but you can still build elemental damage on Sacred Sheath. It's just keep in mind that your elemental damage spread is going to be significantly lower with Sacred Sheath than it will be for Special Sheath. When it comes to online and co-op hunts, the Sacred Sheath is going to outperform the Special Sheath by a significant amount on average due to the fact that it's not reliant whatsoever on maintaining monster aggro. The Special Sheath is going to greatly prefer solo hunting where it can keep the aggro of the monster to consistently land counters and maintain DPS. When it comes to the skills required for the Sacred Sheath, you're going to need good positioning for the Sacred Sheath playstyle to properly land your Spirit Release attacks. Whereas for the Special Sheath, you need perfect reaction time to consistently land counters and repeatedly land those counters to upkeep DPS. The last point I'd like to make is that Sacred Sheath is not reliant on Harvest Moon whatsoever. You don't even need to run it. Whereas the Special Sheath is completely reliant on Harvest Moon for competitive damage when it comes to speedruns. If you are the type of longsword player that's either playing for fun or playing semi-seriously or speedrunning, you know, you do need to take these into consideration. If you're not using Harvest Moon on average, but you are using the Special Sheath playstyle, there's a good chance you're losing out on a lot of damage and you either need to start using Harvest Moon or you should try out the Sacred Sheath playstyle if you want to find ways to increase your DPS. And that's going to be it for the video. I am very curious to hear you guys' thoughts. Maybe you will disagree or agree with me on some of the points I've made. And maybe you guys can point things out that I haven't even thought of yet. I hope that that was a fair analysis of both of these play styles. I do, again, I do think Special Sheath at the optimal levels of play is still better than Sacred Sheath. However, Sacred Sheath is really underlooked right now, and I think it shouldn't be because there is some pretty big potential for the DPS output that it can put, especially online and in multiplayer. But even in single player, if you learn how to land your spirit release attacks, this can have some pretty huge DPS. So. I'm really excited to see what you guys think, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, there's going to be more Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak content up in the future. I do have an elemental build video planned. I just, again, I haven't gotten around to it. I've been working on videos like this um, that I've been really passionate about. This has been a type of video that I wanted to get out for the longest time, so I'm really glad to have finally made it. And that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, do give a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel if you did find the information in this video helpful or you did enjoy the content. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.